Today's episode is presented to you by Best You Mental Health Clinic. Best You is a practice that provides a compassionate space uniquely treating each client based upon their individual needs to reach their goals. At Best You, we believe mental health is not a trend, it is a lifestyle. Best You Mental Health Clinic is currently accepting patients 16 and up, accepts all major insurances plus self-pay. If you would like more information, visit bestumhc.com. Dot com. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the College Game Time Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Smith. And if you're watching on YouTube right now, yes, I'm in my hotel room in Las Vegas at Mountain West Conference Basketball Media Days. I was able to get a quick like two minute one on one interview with Commissioner Gloria Navarez. So I ran back up here to my room to record today's show, get that interview on here and get it out by this afternoon. The Wi Fi here in the hotel takes forever to upload. So right now downstairs, it's it's cool. It's like controlled chaos, kind of like the American basketball media days. Um, they've got a great setup, great efficient event but I'm trying to get up here in this window before the coaches get in the uh the sort of the open they call the open media scrum area so I can get back down there for that Uh, so any other content I get today from media days will be on Friday's show today the only thing from on today's show that you're watching now the only only piece of content from that that will be here is the Navarez interview, which I'm about to play for you. It's only a couple minutes. And then I want to talk about it because I think there's some tidbits in there as it pertains to the playoff model, as it pertains to realignment, as it pertains to the G5 conferences in general. Then I've also got a couple other things I've kind of just been snooping around on, you know, just being in the environment, talking to some people. I talked to a Gonzaga guy. I talked to a lot of people just about trying, I'm trying to, get the pulse and the temperature on Oregon state, Washington state, um, in the mountain West. And so going to kind of talk about all of that on today's show. Uh, but first I'm going to play you this Navarez interview, but before I do, if you're watching on YouTube, you know what to do, like subscribe, comment at the end, share it with a friend. We're less than 150 away now from 4,000 subscribers. So help me get to 4K. Help me get to 4K. Let's get to 4K by the end of October. I was going to say by the end of the week before I get back, but we'll see how many people end up watching this. But anyways, less than 150 away from 4K. Please subscribe. If you're listening on one of the streaming platforms, uh, leave a five-star rating write a positive review and I would greatly appreciate it. Okay. I'm going to play you this quick two minutes, two and a half minutes, whatever it is with commissioner Navarez. And then we're going to discuss commissioner Navarez here of the mountain West conference. Realignment has taken over our summer. Here we are almost to basketball and it's still making its headlines in some case. I'm just curious what your philosophy is on the importance of the conferences in this group working together or is it every conference for themselves when the realignment starts to creep up? Well, hopefully we're at the tail end of realignment as folks have locked in their media deals. But also I think as 10 FBS leagues, it's important for us to think about the expanded football playoff and all the policies so that all teams have an opportunity to play into the CFP championship. That's really what's most important. That's what makes our conference championships relevant. That's what makes league play relevant. Absolutely. And to that point, obviously there were some conversations around the 6-6 model and the 5-7 model, and that was contingent on certain dominoes going one way or the other. What, are, what is your stance on whether the 6-6 staying you know, now and beyond the current contract or going to a 5-7, just any thoughts you have on that? Well, it all depends on how many total FBS leagues there are. And so I think with that question still open, so is the uh, 6-6 and six or 5-7. and seven. So when we get to that point in talking about it, I'm open to right-sizing based on the integrity of the championship selection process. But I firmly believe our league and others like us need to have a way to access it and not be frozen out. So as long as there is that spot for the champion of, you know, the top five leagues, that would serve the Mountain West. It's basketball season. You have a final four team or last year, final four team. What's your excitement and expectation this upcoming season on both the men's and women's side 
for basketball in the Mountain West? You know, I'm really proud of our coaches. I think they've really, you know, everyone loses, especially with the transfer portal in the offseason. Mm. I think we've reloaded. We have a lot of great talent. Again, we have like a top flight coaching staff. So I'm really optimistic. Okay, so I want to talk about a couple of things. That first question, what I was trying to ask was if there was any conversations or any thought processes around the G5 conferences partnering together. So when I say conferences in this group, you know, that's where I'm, I'm referring to the G5. What I've learned, though, with these commissioners, Commissioner Resco, we all know because he's very vocal about it, but even Commissioner Navarez, because I talked to her about it like before I started recording, but like that old G5 term, they're just not crazy about. So out of respect, I, you know, I try to avoid saying that, but Obviously, on here, it's just it's easier because you under, you, it, it, it clarifies what group of conferences you're talking about. But anyways, basically what I was trying to ask was, are there any conversations around G5 conferences partnering together or forming some sort of alliance to, to shield themselves from realignment? And I have a couple of thoughts. After hearing her answer and after... Here a couple, you know, after thinking about it a little bit more, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something else. But what she said was basically she made it about all ten leagues, all ten FBS leagues, and um, essentially that wherever they end up going, they need to think about how every team can have access to the college football playoff. In other words, from her vantage point, the most important conversation that's happening is that all 10 FBS leagues are making sure they don't leave any, any conference or group of conferences out of the CFP discussion altogether. And I agree with that. I think that's absolutely on target and spot on. It wasn't really like what I was trying to extract. And so when I was playing back, listening to that answer, I started thinking, you know, for Commissioner Navarez, like she's never had to worry about teams being poached. But if the pack ends up deciding to rebuild, I mean, I guess we had the situation with San Diego State early in the summer, but we saw how that worked out. It actually worked out in her favor. You know what I mean? Whereas you have like the American conference where they're kind of like the farm system for the power fives or they have been, and then they've poached from the conference USA. And so, so those, those conferences have gotten a little taste of what it's like to have to lose teams and then go find others to, to, to replenish. And so I'm wondering if maybe that was part of it as far as, as um, you know, kind of what, what, had her answer in that way. But then also I'm like, you know, I still am not sure if these group of five conferences are like, they're all fighting the same battle as far as keeping access to the CFP, but are they all, you know, fighting together as it pertains to shielding themselves from realignment when these power fives come knocking. And that's the other thing though, too, is it's, it's a difficult alliance to form. And this, we've had this discussion on this channel in the comments. Um, people have, have come in and talked about, you know, the American and the Mountain West should partner or, you know, the Sun Belt and, you know, such and such should partner as a way of strengthening the conference, strengthening the brand and trying to prevent from losing teams to the power five. But the truth is, if you gave those universities the option, they want to go power five. So it's this interesting kind of conundrum of, OK, do we try to fight like it's like, how do we keep our our conference together? Because that's what I was talking about with Commissioner Oresco even on Monday. I don't even think that was a part of the recording, but he was like, it's it's a problem. We have to figure out. We bring teams in, we build them up, we invest in them, or you know, we we provide a different level of resources. They make the commitment to invest those resources into their programs. And then now all of a sudden they're getting poached by these other conferences. And he, you know, he brings it back to it shows how competitive we are. But it's like, what's the solution? For me, I, I wonder, could, you know, and again, I come back to my idea I talked about a couple weeks ago. I mean, could you not somehow form this G5 Premier League? Now, I'm not going to go on that rabbit trail on this episode, but it's worth entertaining because I think these group of five 
conferences in these group of five teams, like there's a lot of people who watch them. They have a lot of support. And, you know, I mean, you look at the trio that just went to the Big 12. They're 0 for 7. They're going to need time to, I'm sure, adjust and acclimate. But I don't know. Like, like they're not going to wish that they were – like, even if both – all three of those teams go 1-11 and 11 this year – they're still not going to wish they were in the American because the level of resources they're going to be getting in the Big 12 is so much more. And they know that with that, they'll continue to be able to build a more competitive program. And so it's like, I don't know, man. It's, it's, I don't know what the solution is. I still feel like that if there were some for, form of partnership or alliance amongst these conferences and the Group of Five PAC, that, that it could help, you know, maybe shield some of the poaching and realignment and, and maybe even get a power five level media deal. Because at the end of the day, like that's what it's going to boil down to is what conference is going to pay us the most money, give us the most resources. And so I just wonder, could the American and Mountain West come together and command a significant media draw? I don't know. Um, but obviously commissioner Navarra's her, her big thing was look, 10 FBS, all 10 FBS conferences need to make sure that we're, we're providing access to everyone in the CFP. And then, of course, that second question was in that same vein because it was funny because initially I had planned to ask more about what an alliance could look like, but then based on how she responded, I thought, okay, well, let's talk about this 6657 because we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before whenever the CFP meetings were being had, and there was a lot of the conversations about the 66 and 57, and people were like, well, why aren't they going to keep fighting for 66, keep fighting for the 66 model? And one of the things Navarra said I thought was key was she said, I'm open to right sizing. I don't know if you caught that. She said, I'm open to right sizing. I think what she meant by that was, hey, if we lose an FBS conference, which we all know would be the pack, then adjusting the 6-6 to a 5-7, she's open to as long as it keeps, it keeps a spot available for one of those teams outside of what would at that point be the power four. And I think the resounding theme here, because Oresco was talking about this on Monday, is – you know, you've got the Mountain West and you've got the American. They're they're the two, I, I would say, premier, you know, G5 conferences. Um, and that's not to take away from the Sun Belts or anyone else like that. But, I mean, just, just look, at, look at the history. And I think they're very confident or there is a strong feel that if the PAC ceases operations, there is no way the 6-6 model stays in place after this current CFP contract is up after 2025. So it, let's, let's, let's you know, enjoy our two years of having two slots in the event that the PAC conference, conference dissolves or ceases operations. But then, um, you know, let, let's, let's, push for let's work together and keep let, let's you know what do you call it let's work with these autonomy conferences um and if that means going to a five seven and that's what keeps us a spot great because again as we've talked about on this show man there are power five commissioner one in particular i mean he he would prefer 12 at larges and so the last thing you want as a group of five conference or a group of five football fan is um is is to just completely lose all access altogether because you're there's very you know it would be an anomaly for a G5 team to be ranked in the top 12 um come CFP time in the future whereas at least in a 57 so Give me your thoughts on what you said. I know it was a quick interview. I know it wasn't a lot. Like just so you kind of understand what surrounded that is technically she did her media availability yesterday and she was going to do a brief session this morning um, and then was not going to be available for any one-on-ones. And so um, obviously yesterday I got in, I got in, got in when I got in and it was pretty much wrapped up at the media day event by the time I got checked in and settled and all that. I mean, that was the first place I went once I got checked into my room but I got down there really, really early. I connected with the guy who's kind of been coordinating the event. And he said, hey, not sure if commissioner's going to do 
the morning thing because there wasn't hardly anybody in there. She said, he said, but I could probably get you a couple minutes if you want, if you want. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, so I, I know probably what some of you are probably thinking, well, why didn't you ask this? Or why didn't you ask that? Why didn't you ask that? Just, I was, it wasn't like I had like this exclusive opportunity, um, though I am very thankful for the opportunity I had, but I just want, you know, that was what I was, I was seeing if I could get her to speak to some sort of partnership alliance. Um, and then hearing her thoughts on the five, 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 seven versus six, six. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about, cause the other thing I've been kind of like, I don't know, keeping my ear to the ground on, there's a lot of mountain West people here. Obviously it's a basketball event, but a lot of the people are here cover it all. And just in my little sidebar conversations, like there is no smoke. There is no pulse around Oregon State and Washington State to the Mountain West. Take that for what it's worth. I, I know that's not like this official report or anything like that, but I mean, even if you heard how she first answered the question when I brought up realignment, she goes, yeah, well, hopefully we're on the tail end of it with the media deals being secured. You know, there's just no pulse at all. No buzz, no smoke, no nothing around Oregon State and Washington State joining the Mountain West Conference. So if any of you are still thinking that that might be an option, I'm just telling you, as someone who's right here kind of in the thick of it right now, and just so you're aware as well, you know, there's a lot of people here um, that probably normally wouldn't be here, but they are because the Pac-12 basketball media day was, I think, yesterday, like right up the street. Uh, like Jeff Goodman, you know, Goodman Hoops in the field of 68, he's here. Um, I, he's not someone I've talked to yet or may not be able to. We'll see. I mean, he's been like rapid fire going through uh, interviews. But I, I'm just saying, like, there's no nothing. I mean, I was even down there listening uh, the couple people we were talking about just setting up the event, and there was a guy, I don't remember who he was from, uh, talking there. They were, been, guess, been trying to do this joint media day for a while. And, anyways, he, he said some things about Kleofkoff and yada, yada, yada. And I'm just, as I'm kind of trying to slide in there, yeah, anything, you know, Oregon State, Washington State, just, just you know, in these casual sidebars, and man, everyone's just like, it's like nothing, like it's dead. So here's what it comes back to. Something I think that I've been saying for a while, and you've seen some other outlets saying um, as well, is it's going to be one or two options at this point. If you're Oregon State, Washington State, and you're still tuning in, first off, thank you. But at this point, I think, the you know, as I've said, the Power Five, it's only a matter of time before they come back into the, to the conversation. But here's the other reality. Depending on this particular lawsuit, obviously if it goes in the favor of Oregon State and Washington State, now I'm starting to kind of warm up to the idea that maybe they use all those assets to just go rebuild through backfill. I mean, I don't even know what to think of this thing anymore. If you're someone that feels like you you have a good theory as to how it might play out, um, I just I still think there's so much money at risk or on the line that somehow a, a, a power five comes back or power four, I guess, whether it's the Big 12, the ACC comes back into the fold and extends an invite. But if that doesn't happen, which, listen, it's realignment, anything can happen. And Oregon State and Washington State retain those assets. It could be open season on the Mountain West and the American Conference. Probably more so the Mountain West, but it's just what an interesting thing. And now all the big talk right now is with the ACC and vetting these teams. And But all that to say, bottom line, is there. there's just no kind of rumblings. And you can usually have a feel of things, right, when you're kind of in the environment and the way people are talking, like, it's just, it's like a, it's like, it's not even a thing. <laughs> like, and I think that goes back to the fact that neither Washington state or Oregon state want anything to do with the bottom of the mountain West, or for that matter, the bottom of the American. And I actually just recently today just got tagged on a, 
on, I guess, what an interview Mike Oresco just did, maybe it was today or yesterday, where he was talking about being contacted by uh, the four, the Pac-4, when they were still the Pac-4. And I don't know if y'all remember that, but we tar- I told you that. I mean, I told you the one reliable piece of information that I got was that they were in contact, there was mutual interest, and that it would either be all four or none at all to the American Conference. And I haven't listened to that full interview yet. I just saw I was tagged on it. I'll probably check it out later. But it kind of further validates that piece of information I had received then. So I don't know. So if you're watching State of Oregon State, I know right now you're kind of just in waiting mode, letting this lawsuit thing play out. Um, but you know, you see a lot of the links to the big 12 and now with the whole ACC stuff coming up, you're starting to see smoke around that. I don't know if any of it's valid or not, but (sighs) let me know what you think. And then the last thing I want to say, and this is real quick, um, (laughs) I I happened to run into a guy who, who works at Gonzaga and I was just asking him like, Hey, y'all, y'all kind of made some headlines this week, eh? Big 12, is that? And obviously he's not going to sit there and, first off, he probably, depending on where he's at on the totem pole, whether he's, how much he really knows or is plugged into that or not, but what he did say is, uh, does it sound like the Gonzaga side is real happy that that report came out right before their media days? Um, What did he say? What was his exact word? He said, yeah, it's, it's there's some people not happy with that and he said it's it's definitely made this this year's media days uh uh he didn't say nightmare what do you oh he may have just said incredibly awkward but they hadn't even landed yet on the the men's uh representation for the men's basketball team i guess they hadn't even landed yet as far as when i talked to him earlier um but so let me know your thoughts let me know what you what you're thinking about what commissioner navarra said let me know is it even worth G5 conferences trying to shield themselves from realignment, knowing that most of those teams are, are, would kill to be in a power conference anyways? Is there a way to just completely structure this differently where some G5 teams could get, you know, could, 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 could work together to command maybe not a power level media deal but something that's much more significant than what they get now y'all let me know your thoughts on that let me know what you're thinking on this washington state oregon state do you think a a power five's coming into the fold i've been i've been pretty adamant that it's only a matter of when not if and i'm going to stay on that um but i guess it's really going to deter be determined by this this lawsuit and uh, yeah, and then the Gonzaga thing. I, I'm not gonna get into all that because I don't even really know where all that's at. I just saw the. I, I know what everyone else knows as far as the reports that they're strongly linked to the Big 12 and the people with Gonzaga. I talked. The guy I talked to with Gonzaga today doesn't sound like they're too happy that 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 news broke just before media days, and it's 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 made it <laughs> kind of awkward. Anyways, um, that's it for me today. Trey Smith, college game time.